there, it's nice to meet ya. I'm Emirati Bunny and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be taking you to the second location in this series which will continue through the journey into the past. Wait, hold on. Have you watched the previous location? No? Okay, hold on. You need to go watch that first. Click the link here. I'll be mentioning it here somewhere. So just click on this link and then watch that video. Come back here to this video because I want you I want to take all of you with me into this beautiful journey from the start. So go on, click that link and watch the video. I'm waiting. Hmm. I need to do my nails. Huh. Okay, done. All right, awesome. Now, let's go out to our second location. Come on. Hello everyone, Emirati Baniyudi and welcome to my channel. So today I am at Qasr al Husn, and I am here. I want to take you as well with me on this journey to explore this place, to talk about this place and what it means to our late founding father, Baba Zaid. So let's go around, let's explore and I'll explain a few things to you as well. So yeah, let's go. These were the original of how they used to make kahwa, I would say, the Arabic coffee back in the day. As you can see in the picture here, they use this to put it on the camel as this whole structure is for the camel, as you can see. So it shows that how they put it on. So these are the gadgets that were used uh, back in the day when they used to go pearl diving. So this is the tools they used to use to open the shell to get the pearls out and this one is actually they used to tie it around their waist that is like the heavy stone so they put it on their waist and they go diving and they get the shells and then they you know use this tool here to crack open the shells and to get the pearls out so this one here these are actually socks <laughs> I know it looks funny, it looks like beanie hats, but no, it's actually socks. So back in the day, they used to use this. I know when they used to like, you know, uh, ride from one place to another on their camels, 
they used to like wear these socks during the night because it gets really cold so yeah that's just to protect themselves you know to protect their feet this one on top here if most of you know it now it still exists Arabs are still wearing this right now but now it's like in different styles of course so this is called agal they used to wear it on top of Ghatra here when they wear that long white scarf so this is what they put on top of their head it's called agal this right here you see there there's a ball yeah that one is actually called Qurat al-Sha'ar that is actually camel hair yes it's camel hair they use that to let's say if someone got wounded there were no bandages back in the day of course so they used to use this acting as bandage and they used to wrap it on the wound it protects the wounds obviously and it also helps for the wound to heal and breathe at the same time Qasar al-Hussein has been home to the ruling family over the centuries to the late uh, founding father Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan. It is also housed the National Consultative Council and also at the moment now it is the National Archive. Today it stands as the nation's living memorial and also tells the story of Abu Dhabi. Qasar al Hussein is the oldest standing structure in Abu Dhabi and it also has the original watchtower that you will see in this video. And this place it overlooked the coastal of the trade routes and also protected the growing settlements that was established in this island. There are two major iconic buildings in this, uh, in this place. So first it is the inner fort that was built in the 1795 and then there's the outer palace that was built in the 1939 to 1945. So that, my friends, is the passport of Sheikh Zayed. So Sheikh Zayed is also known for a lot of his achievements and I would say some of them were people used to call him the defender or the protector of people. They also call him the uniter of tribes and also the man of diplomacy. This used to be the gates of Qasar al Hassan. This is like the oldest gate here. So as you can see here like they have spikes all over the gate it is made of wood as well indicating that it is a fortress okay guys so as you can see here this is called a khanjar so back in the day again Bedouins they used to wear this around their waist and it, it is like a very popular, let's say traditional or tribal thing that people back in the day or the Bedouins they used to wear it. And also these sticks. I mean, if, um, if you have an Arab family hold, you would see maybe your grandparents, you know, they would be, especially the grandfathers, they would be carrying around, they either have this khanjar or they either have the sticks, these sticks that they still use so it is a traditional thing to have this so guys this is like the weapons that were used also swords and rifles that you can see here um yeah these were also used by our rulers back in the day okay guys as i enter this room i hear like a lot of noises so and i turn around and then i see certain people of the palace so in this it is mentioned that it is both a working palace and also a family home so that it's very interesting that they all you know like are in the same places and everything is like seems very nice like all the sounds the sights the aroma of the palace life like everything seems to be very alive here See what I mean? So men, women, old, young, they all like worked within the spacious wings of the Sheikh Sheikh Bud bin Sultan Al Nahyan's new outer palace. So this right here, it is, we would say like the uh, Hinoud that uh, most of us as Arabs we use it. We use it like on, we put it like a little bit on our palms or you know around my, our neck as well. So and this one is what we call as like the Bukhur. 
So in this, you know, we put like the uh, fragrant wood on the burnt coil and then we put it on this and then we just, it fragrances the whole house, the whole place. And it's very nice. As now you know that we have an Emirates ID, an Emirates card. So this used to, this is that look like. It's like a booklet or a paper sort of. So yeah, that's how it was. All right, so I am outside now and we are currently, oh, this is by the way, the watchtower that I was talking about earlier. So let's go inside and see how it looks like the historic watchtower. So some say that this watchtower was built in the 1700s, which is wow, very old. <laughs> and it is the oldest standing structure, obviously. It is the original watchtower. The guards, they used to climb up there inside as well. And they used to watch if there was, you know, any kind of attacks that were happening or they were just protecting their own, like the palace, the environment itself. So now I have entered the outer palace area. Look at that, how huge it is. All right, so now we're going to go inside and explore more of this place. So this is how it looks like on the inside. As you can see, the windows are not up here, but it is down here. So let's visit one of the rooms and see how it is inside. Okay, those are the pictures and this is the miniature version of the palace. They got the little trees as well. <laughs> so that is Sheikh Sheikh Buddin Sultan Al Nahyan. So Abdabi Force, police force, uh, they were established in 1957 with its headquarters being in Qasar al Hussein. There were like 18 men which was equipped with four Land Rovers. And in 1959, the force was grown over 250 men consisting of regular police and the Murtazi or the special guard, everything. They are all responsible for protecting Sheikh Sheikh Buddin Sultan Al Nahyan. And this was the getup for the police back then, as you can see here behind. That's the force, that's the weapon that they used to use. So guys, now I am at Sheikh Shekhbut's private room. And as you saw, like there is his private bed, the gahu on the corner, the dalla, the radio that he listens to and his glasses and the newspapers now we are heading to different rooms and it, the sun is already setting so i just want to quickly go through that So this room is for Sheikh Hassanawa bin Buti, who is also known by the name of Mother of the Sheikhs or Umm Shiyukh, you know. Uh, she is the mother of our late Sheikh Zayd bin Sultan al Nahyan. So Sheikh Hassanawa, she is one of the most influential women in Abu Dhabi's history and uh, she always kept encouraging her sons to foster peace and stability through the strong leadership and clear vision. This is her bed. 
that's her stuff right there so beside the bed i just noticed that there's like a glass of milk and a few mixed nuts and as it is mentioned here that it's like a thoughtful gesture from the sons to the mothers that they know that she loves eating these so they always were very thoughtful to bring this thing to her every other day like they have like a, like stacks of this just because they know that their mother loved this so they used to always hand it out to her or at least put it beside her bedside So I just came across this section of essential or let's say like everyday spices that they used to use in cooking the food in Qasr al husn Let me show you. So this is sanood, filfil aswad, kirkum, lumi yabis, mismar, hail. And these are the gadgets or let's say the dishes that they used to use in cooking. So this right here is the perfumes and oils that people still use up until now as well. A lot of Arab families, they have these and the scent of it is very strong. So I have reached the second floor of this palace and I came across a very beautiful room here. And when I tried to figure out what this room was, I came to the, you know, the details board here and then it says that this is actually the room for the National Center of Documentation Research, which was built during the 1980s and it has its all like original fitting, the setting, you know, like they didn't move it anything like that and yeah, this is like very interesting. So the National Center of Documentation and Research was established by Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan by the royal degree in 1968 and then later it became the National Archives. And this particular center was based when Qasr al husna was still in the center of governance for the Emirate. So Qasr al husna marks the life events that has happened around its walls and then it celebrates the birth of a child or coming of age and it also mourned over the death of someone in this family or even of anyone for that matter so going into the next room let's see what they have here celebrating marriage nice so weddings they celebrated the joining of two people the joining of two families and they celebrate the marriage by putting songs and uh, parties processions gifts and a lot a lot of other things and then there were men that they you know performed in marriages and there was like a specific um names for it like i would say uh, one is like for example ayala so they I don't know what it is that they, you know, those sticks that you've seen earlier where the, it's like curved on top. So they used to use those sticks and these two. So yeah, they used to dance like that or they used to perform with the song like that, you know, using that. So that's why it's called Ayala. And there's also another one that's called Rafsa. The girls, they didn't used to really, or the women in the community when there was weddings, they didn't used to really dance dance. But then there was like also what I love, love, love about the Arab tradition is that back in the day, they used to have like really long hair. So how they used to dance is that they used to sway their heads like this and like this and their long black hair used to swing you know side to side looks very nice to the ayala music that's the let's say the traditional dance for women or for uh, girls and as you can hear <laughs> okay i was taken aback okay sorry as i was mentioned yeah let me show you here i just found that there's a picture that's the ayala dance that i was talking about that's the sticks and they swing it like back and forth, you know, back and forth. So zehba is something that we call as the preparation or the start of the preparation of the wedding. And lastly, we have came to a very special room and the last room of this palace, which talks about the, let's say the ruler's brothers, you know. So as we know that Sheikh Shahbud was the eldest of all the siblings. So out of all of his siblings, 
uh, the three rulers, which were the Sheikh Zayed, Sheikh Khalid, and Sheikh Hazar bin Sultan Al Nahyan, they all played a very vital role and supported him in Qasr Al Hussein and even across the Emirate in different different ways. So they didn't just share like everyday duties they, or the burden of everyday duties. They also acted as advisors about important matters of the state. Okay guys, so this is the end of the second video and I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it. If you did, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And stay tuned for the third video which will be, I will be uploading very very soon. And if you haven't watched the first one, please go ahead and click here to watch the first one. Alright, take care, keep safe distance and I'll see you in my next vlog. Bye!